Hi guys, Squall here. Today I'm going to be looking at the Chicago map for OMSI. This map was released uh, perhaps just over a week ago and uh, it's available from the Aerosoft website and also from the Steam store. Now this map has two buses in it and it also has two routes. It has quite a few landmarks. I'm going to take you uh, through the map itself, an overview of the map and what you can do. And then I'm going to show you how to set up the bus and set up the route. And then we're going to take a journey on one of the routes. And you'll hear the passengers, you'll see some sights. There are some landmarks, which if you know Chicago reasonably well, you'll be able to look out for those. Let's get started. This is the Chicago map. And you can see that on the left here is the service bus station. This is called Kedzi Depot. This is where the, the buses are stationed in Chicago. They're stationed a few kilometers outside of the actual uh, city center. So if you start in the bus station here, then you've got to ride down this interstate in order to get into the city routes. The green represents the service trip that you'll make to get in between the various routes. Uh, the blue line represents Route 124, which is one of the routes here. 124 goes from the water filtration plants and the Children's Museum and Navy Pier, and it goes all the way over here to Union Station. Uh, 130, which is the alternative route, 130 you can start here at the Adler Planetarium where you'll see the museum, the soldier field and the shed aquarium and it goes into town and actually there's some underground elements here which you'll see and it goes over to Ogilvy Station over here in the northwest. Uh, today I'm going to run service route 130 which is the orange line we're going to start out. I, actually I'm going to start out in the bus station to show you the bus station but I'll cut out the bit on the interstate here and I'll, t I'll pick it up roughly here when we get into uh, the city centre. So we'll then be driving on the approach to Adler Planetarium. This will be the starting point for our journey and we'll drive the planetarium. We'll do half of the run, we won't do the return journey, just a single run. Uh, in a future video I shall show you uh, route 124 which is the uh, planet uh, sorry the water filtration plant run I'll do that in a separate video otherwise the video will be a bit too long so the first thing that we need to do is to create a brand new bus which we do by clicking on this icon here now when you drop down the list you'll see the manufacturer is Chicago City bus there are two buses there is the 40 foot diesel bus which is the non articulated version which is this one it comes with a whole bunch of skins uh, today I'm gonna go for the 60 foot hybrid just because it's a little bit more fun and uh, again this comes with a whole bunch of skins I'm gonna pick the sandwich which is effectively um, a subway logo slightly rehashed and the depot is gonna be Sh Chicago Kedzi depot that's what I'm going to start today uh, route num bus numbers I'm gonna pick 4126 my registration plate will be squirrel and I'm gonna click OK and it'll say where do you want to start now remember you could start Route 130, I could start either at the Adler Planetarium or at Ogilvy Station. Or if I was on 124, I could start at the Union Pier, uh, Union Station or the Navy Pier. I'm going to start in the garage where it'll be nice and quiet and I can show you how to set up the bus. And here we are. We are in the station without a roof. <laughs> this is us in the actual station. Now, you can at the end of the day, which is quite cool, you can bring your bus back here and you can even get it washed here and so on. But it's a, it's a nice place to set the bus up because it's nice and quiet. If we jump inside the bus, and I'll reset my track IR. There we go. It's all nice and quiet. I'm just going to collapse that out of the way for a minute. We'll set up the line in a second. Uh, but I want to show you some of the basics of the bus first. Now, on the left here is one of your main control panels. You know what? I'm just going to turn track IR off. It'll just make it slightly easier to uh, focus on some of these things. I'll just use the old mouse. Oh, most important thing uh, about any bus in OMSI is does it have a window and what does it slide like? Now, I'm pleased to report that it does have a window and, it, and it's got quite a unique slidey sound. Listen to this. And you can slam it harder. It's got, you can tell it's covered in that kind of felty brush stuff. And it has a lovely distinct thud. I'm obsessed with these windows in OMSI, but moving on. Uh, basically, the way that you start the bus up is with this thing here. Uh, at night, you would put it on stop engine. You can put it on the day run or the night run. If you put it on night run, then what happens is the external lighting kicks in. And then when you park up at night, you can stick it on night park. If we move this over to day run, which is that option there, you can see the electrics are now powering up and we can get the bus started. Now the way we get the bus started is we press this button here. 
the engine is now started now when you've just started in the first run not so applicable today because i'm i'm driving this in summer weather but very much in winter you would want to go for a fast idle and you can hear the engine idle speed pick up and then you put a preheat on because you need to warm the bus up but i'm not going to do that i'm going to leave that off in fact i'm going to put the ventilation on to cool uh, the outside temperature is shown up here uh, but unfortunately it's in Fahrenheit 80 Fahrenheit inside the bus 77 outside of the bus um, that is roughly I think 25 Celsius something around that mark uh, I'm, a, I'm a Celsius guy I don't understand Fahrenheit that well <laughs> just depends what you were brought up with uh, the heating is here obviously we're going to put that on low sorry the fans is low just to make it a little bit quieter and then there's a the speaker if you want to speak in the bus internal external uh, the override switch to turn it off and then you've got the hazard lights which are the blinkers driver's light if you need to have that interior lights on the bus which is on normal which is where we want it that pretty much completes this bank of stuff here uh, this one is the door handle if you push it forward it opens the front doors if you push it back it opens the rear doors uh, on this bus on the on these chicago buses they're quite smart about the um the station brake and also the passenger um the passengers can request a stop and when you stop you just have to press the one door opening button which will open this and if they've requested it it will just open itself so and it'll close itself as well you don't need to worry about it basically it's quite straightforward here's the parking brake um and you can also tell if the parking brake is on by that symbol here that is the station brake symbol uh, there's a whole bunch of symbols here which you generally don't see a lot of you only see those if you've got failures and stuff happening uh, you've got your instrumentation lighting which is here uh, this lights up the instrumentation but i first need to put on the outside lights so i'll just do that there we go so the lights are now on and you can see there's a demo on the instrumentation which is quite cool uh, this is your wipers with a push to wash you can see it even made the side window wet which is impressive the washer at the front made the side window wet go and figure that in fact it also made that window wet I think yes it did that is some washer that should be called a bus wash okay so over here you've got the kneel and the ramp now the kneel if you watch the bus you flick the flick that open you must have the parking brake on to operate this that lowers the bus down obviously when you want to uh, lower it down to operate the, uh, the the ramp for somebody with a wheelchair unfortunately in this game you do not get people who turn up with wheelchairs um, I guess that would be a difficult thing to model for the game but nevertheless the bus has this operationally which is pretty cool uh, because in real life of course you would use this now the 60 foot bus also has a bike ramp on the front uh, which you can see if I go outside of the bus and this one does have a use because some of the passengers do get on and a bike will appear on the front when they get on because they put their bike there there's no animation as such it's just they get on and bunk a bike appears here it's still cool i'm glad it's in the game um i'm glad this is in the game as well or the simulator it's strictly not a game i guess uh, you hold it down again if you want to retract the ramp uh, because even if we can't use it fully in the game it's nice to know it's there and if you are a couple of minutes ahead of your journey then you know you can always sit around and just start playing with this stuff uh, bring the bus back up and then lock the button down so you don't accidentally activate it and that's how that works now over here you've got your usual reverse drive and uh, neutral you have to put your foot on the brake in order to operate or switch mode in this which is perfectly normal over here we've got the driver's uh, temperature i'm going to slide that down to cool because it's a cool day uh, this is air intake and that's recirculation and that's the mix of the two so if you're in winter you probably have the heating up and you'd recirculate some of the air just so that you don't send it outside because it's too cold i'm just going to bring the fan up just a little bit we don't need to worry too much about that uh, this stuff here is only used if you're doing advanced ticketing uh, which i'm not going to do today the advanced ticketing uh, is on this bus this bus as a driver you carry no change whatsoever so everybody that gets on will either issue you with exact fare right in which case the, the they put the dollar bills in here and it scans them through there and you can see them sort of collecting here uh, or they get on and they have an effectively like a, a london underground oyster card they swipe here and it takes payment 
uh, automatically. Either way, if they do that, they'll swipe and just get on the bus. If they have to pay, then they'll put the dollars bills in here. You take them and then issue them a ticket. There is no change to be issued. Uh, if you put it on advance payment, then you just need to work out what kind of ticket they want. They do actually speak English, uh, you'll be pleased to hear, so all the voices are in English, there's no uh, German as such. In fact, nearly all of the labelling is also in English, as you can see, uh, coupled with some Spanish, which is here, which is typical for an American bus. Now above here, these are these actually have a dual tilt and a complete raise. They're also on a real bus act as uh, an emergency exit, should, should there be a problem with the bus. Uh, passengers can actually exit this way if the bus is on its side or something like that. You can hear the ventilation once you get inside if I click that. I can also open that door vent, uh, so that roof vent, and that one's already operating, that's fine. The date and time is shown here, this is in American format, so you've got month, day and then year rather than day, month, year, and then that's the local time here. Now, let's get on to logging onto the bus itself. Now I'm going to turn off um, put that back before I forget and leave the idle fan cranked up. The engine should be more or less up to temperature by now given that it's given that it's summer. Yeah you can see the water temperature is pretty much on 100 which is a normal operating temperature for this bus. Um, right so first thing is we need to log into the system and tell the system who we are and the way you do that is here. This is the driver ID and pin code so 1805 9691 this is the run or the route number which we don't know yet because I haven't picked one. If if and when I do in a second you'll see that that appears here. So it's 1805-9691 we need to log in. So login is 1805 and then enter and then the password or the pin number is 9691. Enter. That logs us into the system so the system now knows who we are and it knows we're at Kedzie Garage because it has a GPS and we just need to select the run number. So in order to select the run that we're going to do today we choose from the schedule which is here and I'm going to go for line 130 as I said and my tour today is K01 that is the run number K01 and we are at Kedzie Garage um, if I move along here Kedzie Garage to Ogilvy Station now I did want to show you this journey, but let me just flick through this uh, because I need to start at Adler Planetarium. Uh, in order to do that, I don't think I can show you exiting Kedzie Garage. I think if you, yeah, it's a particular route that we'd have to do. If we we're going to start in Kedzie Garage here uh, and drive out, then I'd have to pick this particular run. Uh, because as you can see this is actually a 20 minute journey, it really is, it's like a 15-20 minute drive down the interstate to get to Ogilvy Station which is where the next run will begin, which is this one, so then you would go Ogilvy Station at 9.30 over to the Adler Planetarium which you can see is some 23 minutes. So in a full route around from uh, Ogilvy Station and back again you're talking pretty much an hour and then it'll break, you'll have a spacer in the route and then you can you can do it again if you want to. Uh, what I could do is I could show you the exit out of Kedzie Garage onto the interstate which will take about five minutes. Uh, I could then cut it and go straight to uh, Adler Planetarium which is where I'll actually want to begin at 9.56. Uh, so let's do that. Let's just start the Kedzie Garage run. I'll get onto the interstate and then I'll basically uh, reconfigure this and start at Adler Planetarium and do that journey. But I can show you how to set up this as we go anyway. So we're on K0, K071, we're due to leave here at 9.09, .09, so we'll advance time in a minute. So if we click OK on that, we're going to displace the bus. And you'll then see that K01 has appeared here as the run number. So we go up here and we select Run, K071, Enter. And straight away it knows we're at Kedzie Garage and we are 53 minutes early. This is where you see how you're doing against your schedule. You can also, of course, go into the timetable down here and check how you're doing. But all, you know, for, for 071 journey, for, the, for that run, you can see all the different slots that are available through the day. And you can see that 130 ends its run at 6pm local time. Uh, the 124 route will carry on, I think, till about, if memory serves, about 9 or 10pm. But this particular run uh, is a daytime run. The idea is to, to take people to and from the station to the planetarium. That's the whole purpose of this journey, uh, this route. So I'm going to do this one, which is the 9.10. We're due to leave at 9.10, and given the time, 
uh, it, it's basically given the time which is eight oh, it just keeps disappearing on me uh, <laughs> we are 51 minutes early but there you go 817 so we're 51 minutes until departure I should advance time in a second so that's not a problem first of all though I'm gonna make it change the display on the outside because it currently says Kedzie garage if I click on this button and then go we're on line 130 our destination is actually Ogilvy station which is that one there 130 you can see it's now gone to Union Stroke Ogilvy Station, which is exactly correct, 1.30. The lights are on. Oh, my engine's gone off. So, <laughs> there's another feature of this bus. Um, if you idle it for 10 minutes, this is the real-life thing. If you idle this bus for 10 minutes, it automatically turns itself off. And you can turn it back on again, but you only get so many attempts to do it before it then gets locked and you have to get an engineer to come and turn it on. It's a safety feature of the bus, uh, but hopefully we can start her back up. But if we did another 10 minute run, uh, we could be in trouble. So straight away, I've got to punch that back in. K071, enter. So we've punched that back in. Hopefully it's remembered. No, it's lost that bit as well. So that's what happens if you idle for more than 10 minutes. It's not a problem. We're gonna get going in now anyway. So I'll collapse that out of the way. Um, actually, like I said, we are quite early. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Hello. Run. Zero, seven, one, enter. Uh, yes, I think I made a mistake here. I have to I have to do this before I do that. Because if I do this, it resets that. So there's an, a little tip there. Uh, basically, make sure you select this first and do that before you punch in the run number up here. Do that lap do that bit last. I knew there was a reason why I was leaving that. I remember now. It basically resets it. So that's fine. Let's get the wheel back on. Uh, the lights should still be on. Yes, they are. Lights are on. Ventilation's open. Uh, internal temperature is at 74. So I'm going to change that to ventilation rather than cool. So we'll change the climate control. I'll open the window a touch because I would do that in real life if I was driving. And uh, we shall advance time. Uh, we are 48 minutes early. We are due to leave here at 9.10. So I advance time now to 9.08. Like that. And we are now scheduled to leave. Scheduled zero means you need to leave, buddy. Put my track IR back on. Which is that option here. Make sure that is lit up because then it will tell me where to go. Uh, because I don't know Chicago that well, so <laughs> I do have to have it tell me where to go. Now, release the parking brake. On this bus, I'm going to let go of the brake. Watch what happens, okay? Nothing. The station brake is automatic. If I put my foot on the accelerator, it releases the station brake automatically. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is put it in drive. That. And then as I put my foot down, off we go. So it's an automatic station brake, and there's another interesting feature, which is an automatic retarder. So as you're pressing the brake, uh, sorry, as you're pressing the throttle and you're accelerating, it effectively releases the retarder, as you would expect. But if you let go of the throttle completely, can you see that yellow light comes on? Retarder on. So if you want to cruise but not slow down, what you have to do is feather the throttle. You just hold it slightly inward and that releases the uh, retarder but if you actually want to slow down just back off the throttle and the retarder will automatically slow you down obviously if you've not got enough you'll then put your foot on the brake now you can see that I touched the brake and then the station brake came on automatically put my foot on the throttle and the station brake is released that's a cool feature and it becomes very natural after a very short amount of time Okay, we are on the road. Now, when you're coming back and at night and you want to park in the garage, you need to approach that gate. You drive up to the bottom end there and then uh, you park in the back of this station there. There is no cleaning facility as such. It's automatic when you are inside the garage area. You can just clean, you just bring up the menu and clean the, the, uh, the bus or fix any problems. They are nothing to do with us, so we're going to ignore them. There is no automatic... Um, turning off of the indicator so if you turn the indicator on and then you turn a corner and straighten up unlike your car for example it does not automatically uh, cancel the indicator and that thing catches me out an awful lot 
Now the only other thing to point out is that these speeds on the outside are in miles per hour and the internal is, on in, is in kilometers. Uh, America, a bit like England, works on miles per hour so you need to be aware of that if you're in Europe or German or whatever and you are used to seeing things in kilometers per hour, that is not the case on this bus. Should not cut that bend up too much. And this is the interstate here. And we are going to be heading eastbound, which is over there. We are heading eastbound down that way. You can see that very, very, I don't know if you see that in the distance though, you can see the uh, the white skyscraper. You can just see a little bit of that. Whoops, that's my horn button. I was trying to do this just so we could show the outside of the bus. It's quite cool. You can see $3 off a sandwich. Blatantly a Subway advert, but not really. Debranded. Wow, look at that. That's pretty weird for an interstate. <laughs> wow, never seen that before. I guess they're waiting for me to come. Look at this down here as well. There's a train down the middle as well. Okay, let's get going. That's pretty fantastic. It is, after all, a simulation. Now, we need to keep left here. Because we're going to go downtown. So we keep left onto the interstate, which is this bit. Now the speed limit is 55, uh, I believe, for a bus on the interstate. So you need to make sure you don't break that speed limit. Yeah, look at, look at, I can see my mirror. I'm going to put my foot down. You can see we quickly picked up speed now. Going to get in that lane. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of traffic was just waiting for us. And that's it, we're on the interstate, and this is pretty much like this now for another 15 minutes or so. So I shall drive this, this route down the interstate, and I'll cut that out of the video, and we'll pick it up as I start to approach uh, Chicago itself and get off the exit road for the interstate. Well, here we are, we're at the end of the interstate, and we're approaching the exit. You see the Grey Cat bus terminal on the right? Uh, we need to pick our journey now at this point. Uh, downtown Union Station or downtown straight on. I want Union Station, Ogilvy Station, so I'm going to go this way. Uh, there's another alternative downtown, which is down there, if you're going to go towards the museum, I think. Well, I can see traffic already. There are some recommended settings for this. If you, have a, if you get this, have a look in the manual. There are a bunch of recommended settings. Oh, he's actually crashed. That's interesting. That's a bit awkward. Either that or he's a parked car in a very strange place. Uh, there are some recommended settings which I suggest you switch to uh, in order to get good performance. Um, but having done that, I then started to play around with the settings because I noticed that I wasn't seeing too many passengers uh, and I wasn't seeing too many cars on the road either. And this being Chicago, I thought, you know what? I don't want to drive around Chicago and just not have a load of traffic because that would feel a bit odd. Uh, so what I did was I then started to ramp some settings up, but I kept my eye, if you press the shift Y key, uh, it brings up a load of information, and top left though you can see the FPS, um, about the fifth row down, so if you can, you know, crank up settings without losing FPS, if you can still haul about 30 FPS, which is pretty much the best you're ever going to get from this game, to be honest, they have done a bunch of work on it lately to, to make it more optimal and to make it more stable, and I have to say that I've... I've had a pretty good run. I mean, I don't want to jinx this, but so far I've, you know, not really had any significant crash, and oh, I think maybe one out of about six gaming sessions, uh, which is pretty good. And performance definitely seems to have improved. And I'm holding pretty much 30 FPS in Chicago, and Chicago is a pretty detailed map, so I'm quite happy with that. And I've got significant levels of traffic, um, both active and parked, and I've cranked up the um, pedestrian count number and the bus stations should be pretty well populated with quite a few people getting on on the bus which is what I want that's what I want from a bus simulation I don't want to drive around an empty map with hardly any cars and nobody getting on my bus that just kind of feels completely pointless um, so yeah play around the settings but make sure that you can keep a good frame rate if you can hold 30 then you know I'd say you're doing pretty well okay now on the signs now, we've got the green service route, but we've now got a 130 Union Station sign, so I'm going to follow that. And I may go back on what I said about um, driving from um, the museum 
the aquarium, sorry. I may just go to Ogilvy Station and start the journey there. It kind of makes sense to do that. Um, I did plan on cutting out a whole chunk of this, but I think you guys probably um, would want to see this. So let, let's just stay in here. We're almost at Ogilvy Station anyway. We're heading towards the northwest part of the city. Uh, so let's get to Ogilvy Station, switch the journey uh, to go from Ogilvy Station uh, on Route 130 down to the aquarium. And then we'll just do that, you know. And you get to see okay, this woman walking across here in a very kind of stiff, bored manner. Um, the only thing I would say about OMSI 2, um, I mean, apart from the fact that, that I love it and I wish they'd work on it a lot more, uh, is the pedestrians. Um, you see the same people in... It, it's interesting because the sounds are different. Like I see the same people that I see in the German and English maps. The exact same people. But they get on the bus and have different voices. And that's because the sound packs, the sound WAV files that play out, uh, can be changed. They can be patched. Each map can have different sound files. And that's cool. But I, I honestly wish that, that there was a way that we could see more pedestrian models, different people. I would like a larger variety. And I think, I don't know if that's something that the map, uh, that the mod authors can change, or whether it's just not built into the game. Uh, whether it's just fixed in the game and baked in and that's that. Just watching this taxi. Um, but, let me get in this lane here. If you can possibly change it, then I would love to see that. Now this is Union Station right here. When I drove here originally, I missed it completely because I was expecting a terminus. But this is 130 Union Station, so be very, very careful. If you, whoops, get off the curb. You start your journey here then this is the actual station I'm gonna put the full brake on now like that uh, some indicator off now if you spot the curb line here you see where the, my upright is and the horizontal bit you see how it meets this corner point there that's how you know that you're very very close to the curb because if I look on the outside now you'll see that I, my wheel is touching the curb so if you're driving along and you don't know how far the curb is because you can't see it here what you need to do is watch that curb line and if it if it gets the corner points you're about to touch the curb so ideally you want it to be just here just before that corner so that's just a little tip for you um right let us bring up the journey uh we are on k061 scheduled seven minutes early so what's happening now is the system knows that we're at ogilvy station and it knows that our journey begins at 9:30. Um, because it expects you to continue you could drive this all day long and you can see 921 here we are due to leave at 930 therefore we are just about seven minutes early so if I advance the clock to perhaps about 928 ish something like that collapse that out the way let's open the door just in case anybody wants to get on but it is the early morning run and you do get differing um, amounts of passengers yeah, we are, we are now due to leave, basically. We're on a schedule zero at this point. Ogilvy Station 9.30. So, let's begin our run, shall we? Because it doesn't like anybody's getting on here. We'll shut the doors. You see the st Did you see the cab light went off automatically? That's another thing this bus has. As soon as the doors open, the uh, driver's light comes on. And when they close, the driver's light goes off. Now, you need to jump all the way across the lanes here. So you better watch the mirror because, although I've not got collisions turned on, I, I try to play it as if I did have collisions turned on. Uh, and the reason I don't have collisions turned on and I recommend that you turn them off is because the AI cars, um, well, let's just say that they're not perfect and they will collide with you. And when they do, you have no choice but then to stop and report that to the police and that will delay you 15 or 20 minutes and make your passengers unhappy and give you a very bad report at the end for something that was not your fault. So I recommend that you, you know, turn that off. Get that guy there. Recognize all these models. I'm hoping we'll get some passengers soon. There we go. Uh, now one other thing to note is that in America you can turn right on a red. Okay, so you have to watch out for that. We're making left turns at the moment, so we're not hitting that, but if you approach some lights, and as long as there's no sign which says don't turn on red, then you can you can turn on red. 
You should always look and give way, of course, but um, you don't need to sit at lights. Okay, so I'm following the orange 130, which loops around Union Station, which is what we're doing. That lane on the right is a bus lane, so we could actually drive down that, except I've got a significant number of parked cars turned on, uh, so more or less that lane will be blocked. However, as is free here, you should use it if it's free. That's that's the way that the, the bus drivers operate. Now, it looks like... Oh, it's a police or fire engine. Looks like we're going to get some passengers here. There are emergency services in this. Now, you see where the curb line is? Whoa, that's an, actually a different... Okay, that's unexpected. Um, right, so it looks like... Let me just work out what happened here. Museum Campus. It thinks I finished that journey at Museum Campus. That's interesting. We're now at Clinton and Washington. Not sure why I got a report there. Now they don't want to get on here, which means they don't like where I'm going. Oh yes, they do. Museum Campus. 1.30. Okay. Alright. It's worked itself out. That's fine. Hello. Hello. How's it going? And I see she gave me a dollar bill there. So if I press T for ticket, that issues the ticket. Hey. Otherwise, they get morning. on a swipe automatic. Good morning. Cool beans. We are now running late by a minute. Uh, so we're going to basically shut the doors and get on with it. Uh, so basically, yeah, it kind of. That was kind of strange. It resolved itself. Um, at first it thought I wasn't on a journey. Then it seemed to end the journey. Then it started me off again. I'm not really sure why it did that. But it's okay. Everybody got on the bus. No harm was done. We're a minute late. We're going to have to stop at all of the stations that have a red... Sorry, orangey red symbol on them. If you listen, the bus has a built-in GPS and announcer. So you'll hear him talk as we approach the station. Hello. You can hear the announcer say to museum campus. Uh, I'm just going to get on with this because we need to claw some time back and the lights on green and we don't know what traffic's going to be like. So Let's see if that guy will let me in. Yes, he did. Friends food service looks a lot like a subway. Now that was a passenger request. You can see the, the red light has appeared on the dash down there. Just here, there's a stop request. As I've said, you don't need to operate the rear door. It will autom operate automatically. And I'll show you that in a sec. Try and get close as I can to the front there. There you go, you see that at the back? They get off automatically. Now there's somebody here wants a ticket. Good morning. Okay. Some people talk to you, some of them are just really quiet. It's kind of like real life. Okay, schedule zero. Let's get going. Now, if you look at the symbols... I can see down the road there on the right, I can see another bus stop for one thirty. so we're going to stop there. But, there's a car in our in our um, lane, which means I need to get into that middle lane. That down the middle, in case you're wondering, um, this kind of between the right lane and the leftmost lanes, that is a cycle lane. Uh, that taxi hopefully is going to let me in. And that's another stop request. So people are making fairly short journeys, which is interesting. Get back in that lane while I can. Transfer to Union Station local and mainline trains. There you go. Transfer to Union Station local and mainline trains. Now, like I say, there are um, significant landmarks in this map, and Union Station is obviously one of them. Uh, but you've even got like <laughs> there's a uh, a prison building. That I don't know if we'll see it. The prison building looks like a Toblerone stuck on its end. It's it's a triangular-shaped building. And apparently, 
um, the exercise bit is on the top so the prisoners exercise every day on the top of this very very tall building I guess the premise is that there's no way they're gonna escape because they can't really jump off now I think we're going left here so I need to move over as best as I can this taxi's gonna let me which I don't think he will come on taxi come on dude Jackson and Riverside this is not good this is not good <laughs> AI was just giving me no space. Of other customers when traveling with strollers or carts. If the bus becomes crowded, please fold your stroller or cart to make everyone's ride smoother and safer. So apparently, a stroller uh, is American word for a pram, effectively like a fold-up pram. In case you don't know. Thirty Museum Campus. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Museum campus. To museum campus. Okay, that's cool. Where are we on schedule? Looks like we're pretty much on schedule. So let's get going here. We're sticking this lane. Now we're crossing over the river. Which, I have to say, the texture for the river um, is not really that good. It doesn't even look like water, to be honest. Oh, wait a sec. Now, this is a right turn only, unless you're in a bus, in which case you can go straight on. Which is kind of cool. It's, it's quite nice seeing, you know, bus-only things and going, I can actually drive down there. Because <laughs> if you're a car driver... You know, that that doesn't happen. Is this the 130 bus stop? Yes, it is. Wasn't sure just before I opened the door. That was a passenger request. See, the door shuts automatically. I didn't do a thing, though. That just happened. Franklin. Uh, bus is stuck. Interesting. It seems like the station brake was active. Did I actually open that front door? I don't remember doing that. Okay, there might be an interesting feature though, which I only just discovered. I shall keep my eyes on it. Financial place. Transfer to trains. Oh, you see the frame rate take a tank in as it loads in new bits of the map. That's the kind of thing that they need to fix. Now, there is an option to load the entire map as the game loads, but it takes ages. I could do it, but this being a 32-bit process is not advisable. If this game was 64-bit, um, I could, in theory, just tell it to load the entire map. I have enough RAM for it. Uh, but on 32, I'm not convinced that I do. I think I just get out of memory errors, to be honest. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that I know this game's a bit of a it's got a bit of a cult following uh, but it's a very enjoyable game and I think only one of the two devs are now working on it I could be wrong about that I don't really follow it that closely um, if you do then you know please let me know but I, I wish they could get more development resource on this and just kind of bring it up to speed this is a game that has um, a lot of merit but just seems to be plagued and suffer from performance and issues and bugs and, and the fact that it's 32-bit it really needs to be changed to 64 uh, and I'd love to see that happen I kind of part of me kind of feels I wish they'd kind of do a kickstart or something get it kickstarted and, and you know get some get some people to back it to get the resources to get more developers um, just to make it just to bring it up to where it should be put it on a decent engine uh, a decent graphics engine because it's one of the very few games that it's a bit like a, a, a flight simulator in its detail, in that, you know, everything's clickable. And a lot of games don't tend to do that. But this one does, and it's... Um, I'd like to see it succeed. I wouldn't like this game to just fold up and collapse, you know? Just look at that, that car, though. Look at the wheel arch. 
You can see the polygons. <laughs> you know, 2015. We shouldn't be seeing polygons like that. We really shouldn't. If you think of what graphic, what graphics are in games these days. Okay, that's a bit of an awkward bus stop, but. Hey, how's it going? It's going good, man. Thank you very much. Just getting the lingo, you know. Now we've got a left turn, I think. So I'm going to keep going over here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stay in that lane. Just because I can see a parked car ahead. Congress, Harrison. Actually, I'm going left. I'm talking nonsense. Right, what does that say? Turning traffic must yield to pedestrians. That's another common thing, and I've seen that in... I think Germany and Sweden is the same. Um, that if you turn and, and a passenger's on that bit there, you have to give way. And to be fair, I think that's the way it should be. Yeah, we don't tend to do that a lot in the UK, but I think we should. Okay, one second. You can see the counter there, even the counters are working. You can hear people talking in the back of the bus. In fact, if you get in the back of the bus, you can even look around with track IR. Look. How cool is that? Oops, I almost cut that up. I'm going to stay in the right lane as best as I can. I have to say I'm quite happy with the fact that I yanked up the settings. Um, we are seeing a bit more of that that frame stutter as it loads in scenery. There is no kind of built-in streaming. Like most games will stream content in. There'll be some kind of background thread running which will be streaming in parts of the map that's coming up and, and bring it into RAM slowly so that you know there's no kind of stop. Like if you see, what, what's happening in OMSI is it's, it's a tiled game. So as we cross the boundary between one tile and another, it will, you know, just stop and load up the next bit of scenery in the next tile. And that's why you see this kind of stutter and this, oh, while it loads the next bit up. Um, what it should do is stream content. So as you move across the map, it should throw away tiles behind you uh, gracefully and, and load up new ones. Now, I'm making a mistake here because I can turn right on a red light and because that's not natural to me as an English person, I often find myself not doing that. Oh, this is this is good. <laughs> I hope they're, either the taxis are going to move or everybody's going to walk to my bus. It looks like they're going to walk. That's interesting. Look at that. I assume those taxis are going to move. I really do hope so. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? It's going good. Thank you for asking. How's it going? Okay. No. It would be nice if they put something in this game that could perhaps detect a microphone and if I say something I mean obviously it can't understand what well it could but it wouldn't need to if I say something back it it randomly plays a retort so she goes how's it going I say something and then she says oh that's good to hear or goes you know well, screw you <laughs> just just you know stuff to make it really almost like a dialogue you could have some really fun times with that because like I say you can make your own sound packs you know, they're just files. Uh, I do hope I'm going the right way. Yes, I think I am. Schedule. I am on time. Which is good. You wait till you get to the, uh, the terminus and you see the scenery. It's pretty cool. Jones College. Clean uh, hybrid bus. Nobody's got on yet that's got a bus, which is disappointing. It doesn't happen that frequently, but it does happen. And I was kind of hoping we'd get lucky and get somebody with a bus, but... So far, that's not happened. Just the one guy. Standing there with his arms out. Is that how people wave for a bus in the, in the States? They just kind of <laughs> hold their hands out. Good morning. Oh, is it afternoon now? Blimey. No, it's not. It's good morning. 
fool! Now, I've always been disturbed about, obviously, like, the way that passengers stand up when they could sit down. Or when they sit down, they put their hands in front of them like they're holding a ball. It's, it's very weird. Okay, these lights are taking a long time. And there's no traffic. There's a counter down there. And I need to change lanes, so hopefully... Come on, there we go. Get in the middle lane before somebody comes along. Okay, straight on and to the right. Now, where are we? Museum campus. There's another woman in the pink. I can see. State 9th, apparently. So far, we've had no complaints from the bus uh, occupants. But let me tell you, when they complain, you really know about it. Hello. Uh, particularly if you're late. Um, oh, man. They get on and they go, if this bus was any later, it'd be tomorrow already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or if you hit the curb, they're like, whoa, what you doing? So yeah, it's worth investigating that if you want a bit of fun. Wow, twins. Look at this. Morning. Morning. Dressed identically as well. It's impressive. Schedule zero. Now we've got a left turn coming up, so I'm going to move over here. I was about to say, when are people actually going to get off this bus? Because we seem to have loads of people in the bus now. Roosevelt and State. Now that's interesting, the red, orange and green lines, now they're referring to the underground bar. Um, in the UK we have, you know, we have a red line, we have a green line. Do we have an orange line? I think we do. The red line is the central line, the green line is the district line. And that's how we refer to them, so if we was doing this in the UK, the bus would go, change here for central and district lines, it wouldn't say change here for red and green lines. And I think, to be honest, I, I think it's better the way England does it because you get people who are colorblind, you know, and, and referring to things as red and green really doesn't help. Um, okay, this is interesting. So my lane and his lane are directly head on, which makes sense because we're both turning. I'm going to stop here. Don't you dare drive into me. That's a classic example of why you have AI collisions turned off, because honestly, that guy would just bash into me. The AI isn't smart enough to avoid that. Good morning! Museum campus. It's a museum campus. Right, we'll stay in the bus lane. You can see the skyscrapers here, look at this. There you go. Well, that's not a skyscraper. There are some around. There's even a BP garage, look at this. 43.9, is that right? Or is that a gallon? Is that $4 a gallon? I think it might be. All that Chicago has to offer is on CTY. Day passes offer three days of unlimited riding for one low price. More 
Modern on ChicagoTraffic.com or call 888-YOUR-CTY for sales locations. Brilliant. In America, you get on a bus and they have adverts. Call 888-YOUR-CITY. I got a CDY.com. <laughs> it's brilliant. Wow, that's a lot of traffic. What is that taxi doing? This doesn't look good. Whoa, what is he doing? Why is he stopped? Oh, this is awesome. Finally! I think that taxi thought he was a bus. Right, are you staying here? You do know I've got right of way now, pal. Unbelievable. Unbelievable! That's taxis for you. In this game, that's what taxi drivers are like. Now I'm gonna get bashed by a car. Get out of here! Sorry for late, mate, but you know, what can I say? Taxi drivers. Good morning. Good morning. Well, that was short and sweet. Uh, bus stop ahead. We'll stay in this lane. That's good. Now, what's this here? Crescent Heights. Crescent Heights. It's an advert. If you want to buy that plot of land and build a building. Actually, quite a sky block that is. It's kind of cool that this is a hybrid articulated bus. Soldier Field and Field Museum. I think we're not far off the end of our journey. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Oh, we're going right, that's fine. Now, we can turn right here, but, unless it says we can't, in which case we can, but we have to give way. So, although we can go right, we still have to give way to these guys. Like that. So, it kind of treats it as a junction, if you turn them right. A give way junction. Which I think makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Aha, I think that's the stadium down there. And I also think we need to be over here. Does that sound the green sign? Left on green arrow only, McFetridge Drive. Okay, we're going over there, I think. So we're good to be in this lane. There we go. Now I would expect most passengers to start getting off shortly. There you go, that's a significant building. In the manual, at the end of the manual, it explains what all of these buildings are. It's quite cool. There's some history as well. I like it when they do that. Because you know, I don't know Chicago, I've never been there. But it's kind of cool to have these landmarks in there and then tell you about them. There we go. Museum campus. I expect a number of people to get off here. Two. Two people got off at the museum campus. This is a tow zone. If you're not a bus, you're going to get towed away if you park here. Now this is awkward. I expect the driver would stick his head out the window at this point, but in this game it's just really hard to see. Okay, left turn. Now, 
these aren't traffic lights it's a stop sign and apparently in America you give way to whoever gets there first so I think they got there first so I give way but then I think I got here um, so I should have give, I should have right away I think but yeah <laughs> against the AI I'm not really sure not really sure it plays by that rule I've got a stop sign, so I think we have to stop the pedestrians. Now there's the aquarium on the left. So if I saw a pedestrian here, I would have to stop. Okay, we have a passenger request to get off. So we have to stop. Three identical people. This is why we need more models in OMSI. Yeah, that kind of situation shouldn't happen. I should have a bus full of people that look different. That's what I'm trying to get to. There should be like at least a hundred models in this. And to be fair, if they opened up that to the community, I think the community would just make loads for them. I'm sure there's like a hundred people around the world would make two each. And then we'd just end up with a whole load of models in this game. They should just do that. Stop sign. Nothing coming. We are almost at the terminus. You can see it down there. That's the turnaround point. Museum campus. One minute late. We're on a fairly tight schedule. Now, why is there two orange signs here? Planetarium. I think this is the terminus. And then the next one is the start point. I think that's the difference. So this should be the last station, I believe. That next one there is the start of it. There you go. Fantastic! Look at that timetable. Uh, a minute and a half late there, that's the most I, I slipped. But I then got it back and became 20 seconds. So that was early, wasn't it? I was slightly early on this one. Two minutes late on that? Yeah, just started to get late here. This is when the taxi sort of caused a problem. But otherwise, you know, that was a pretty accurate run, I thought. And yeah, that is uh, OMSI Chicago. It's available on Steam or the Aerosoft website. Uh, it's pretty good if you play OMSI. It's a very nice addition to your OMSI library. But that's it from me for this video. That was half of 130 route. And in the next video, I'm going to cover Route 124. Or if you're American, Route 124. <laughs> that's it from me, guys. Happy driving.